What? Uh, uh, uh. Hello everybody, I hope you are well. Welcome to another kitchen gadget testing video. This is number 40 something, which means we're potentially at the midlife crisis stage of the gadget testing series. We have got so many gadgets to get through today. I'm gonna to cram as many as we can in and hopefully we'll have a plum pie and hot dogs and chips made by the end of this video. As always, before commenting down below, please consider that some of these gadgets can help people with disabilities and put on your sweatband, have a barathon if you've missed any of the other gadgets. I'm getting so many people going, Barry, show out this gadget, and I've already done it. So check out the playlist. Speaking of gadgets. All right, so um, I have been teasing it for long enough and I can confirm I am now fully in progress. Process, oh, what is this? It's my logo, it's just these are some dummy boxes. Uh, like vegetable chopper, like Boston Amy salt and pepper shake of pug things. I'm gonna finally do it. Uh, I'm working on it. I don't know if I'm gonna crowdfund it or not yet. I don't know, I might try and do it on my own. But just know I'm gonna be bringing out my own range of gadgets. They'll be available worldwide wherever you are and I'll let you know more info about it as I progress. So keep an eye on social media if you don't follow me already. Anyhow, we have got a lot to get through today. Let's do it. So I was in Bath the other day with Mrs. Barry shopping. She took me out and dragged me around the shops and I actually don't mind that generally, although I did do a video on Twitter going like, what are you supposed to do? Do you, go, do you generally take interest in the dress and go, yeah, I'd quite like to wear that. Anyhow, uh, half the time we spent in uh, kitchen gadget shops, there was loads there, and I found this thing, and it, it just excites me. So here is an egg. And there's the evidence, that is an egg. This thing is from France. Uh, it just says the cookout France uh, separator de Jean Duf X yolk separator. So we've had many of these on the channel before, but I just love the fact that it's a chicken. And of course you can just do this with a plastic bottle, but what really got me was the front cover where it was like a yolk just coming out of a chicken's bum. Let's do it. All right, so whilst goldfish takes a day off, I've given this a quick wash and I'm just gonna squeeze it in. Suck up the egg yolk and boom, there it is. And I don't know why I have a separate ramekin because I need the whole egg for the uh, the thing anyway. Come on, egg white, droop off. Le, le chicken et le egg. Okay, so this is what we're going for. There we go, like a chicken bum laying thing. See that? Oh my God. There we go. These things are excellent, uh, whichever ones you get. I've got about eight other different versions of these upstairs, but the, the chicken bum just did it for me. But anyhow, I will need this egg beaten together for the pastry in a bit to give it a nice golden color. The pie we're making today was originally going to be cherry flavored. Yes, uh, using one of these uh, cherry pitter, quick pit chef and gun things, can poof, fire out the pits of cherries. So I went to the supermarket, yeah, and they didn't have any. Brilliant, I'll do that another time. Instead, uh, here's a brand, the Handy Kitchen thingy. We've seen some of their stuff before. This is the Plum Pitter. A bit like a cherry pitter, but it's the armpits of a plum rather than a cherry. So, I've got some uh, plums. I picked up the wrong ones, first of all, that were not ripe, but I then found some ones that were ripe and ready, some standard colored ones like this, and also golden plums. How exciting is that? And I've just realized that they might, no, no, they should have the, the pits in them. So the cherry gun uh, goes, for another video. Uh, but this, I've just given it a wash, taken out the packaging. Handy kitchen thingy plum pitter. Effortlessly remove plum stones in one quick and simple movement. So, oh, there's a lock on it. Okay, there's a lock here. I guess we push that up and will it open it up? Yes, it will. Oh my gosh. So we're gonna stick it right in here and then go, uh, come on. Uh, what? Why is it not doing it? This feels like it could break. This is, this is not good. Look at that. Look, it's starting to fade there, it could snap. Uh, no. <laughs> it's a great plum holder. Hi, I'm plum holder. It, it, let's, let's give it the benefit of the doubt. Let's try a golden plum. Oh, it's just, it's gone through. Uh, it pushed something out, it pushed, look, 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 look. Uh, if I go like, <laughs> it's gone right through it. Oh, look at that. Oh, I have got something up. Look, 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 there it is, there it is. Oh. Doesn't smell like an armpit. But there we go. This is, this is, this is okay. It might be the bigger ones that work because maybe it just gets easier into it. 
Ah, oh, look, 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 look. Oh, look, and the, 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 the stone, the pip, the pit, uh, is, uh, is too big for the, well, it, it won't even go through, look. That's a poor design, that needs to be a bigger hole. All right, I'm feeling more confident in it now. I'll try another one of these, but these are a little bit firmer and smaller, so maybe it does need to be bigger, you know, big daddy plums. Uh, uh, uh. That, the, these ones aren't doing it, but the yellow ones, I'm glad I bought two different versions now. Yeah, so every single one of those ones out, this gadget has gone from being pants to um, ac acceptable. But what I do like about it is you can go like that and then slot this across if I haven't broke it and it locks into place because this is actually really, really sharp. So I'm gonna make a smaller pie now. I'm gonna come at you now with three gadgets in quick fire succession, but just quickly back onto the subject of my own gadgets. I'm only gonna release ones that I've endorsed and actually liked in the past or create my own ones from scratch. So sometimes there's no need to reinvent the wheel, but other ones I'll be like, yeah, I need your help. Well, I'm actually gonna come at you with four gadgets and we'll come to these in a minute, but this is our legitimate new grater because our other one broke. So I ordered one for Mrs. Barry and she's like, can I use the grater? I'm like, just wait till I do my next gadget video because I can shove it in there. Uh, this is not just any other grater. I think this one's by OXO. Look, mm. ah, look, inside it neatly, it snugly <laughs> fits up there. This is a pot. You can take the lid off. You can sit your thing on top like this and then you can grate away. Great. So what we're gonna do, Rather than get cheese and stuff all over the table, we're not using cheese, we're gonna use butter. So this is really cold. Um, what I really like about this canister thing down there is it's got measurements on it as well. But I'm gonna just grate my butter. Is it collecting it? I can't see, I'm trying to work quite fast before it melts in my hand. <laughs> yeah, it is going really quick. But this is going really quick too. Oh my gosh. And this should hopefully well, I actually did a little bit over what I need, so I'll get rid of this. And obviously, you generally tend to use this for cheese, right, and vegetables. <laughs> I've christened our grater, Mrs. Barry. But look, the, the butter is in there. Oh, look, it's all collected in there. Now, I've gone a bit too much more than I needed, but you could see how you could just quickly get your lid, oh my gosh, and stick it on top and store it in the fridge and pre-grate your cheese. I bloomin' love that, that's awesome. So, I've done this on proper recipe videos, a bit more detail, but two to five grams of butter, no, flour, <laughs> this is flour. This is plain, plain flour. Flour with no personality. We'll shove this into a big old mixing bowl. Obviously not the biggest mixing bowl I have because of this. I think I just, <laughs> I've just cracked our mixing bowl. So then what you would normally do is get your butter. Okay, <laughs> it worked all right. But you'd rub it between your fingers and thumbs, which I absolutely detest. But that's where this thing comes in and I need to wash it. The pastry blender. It looks kind of like a potato masher that's got a bit angry and just been like, yeah, I want to be Wolverine. Uh, it's got a thumb holder. Oh, look at that, that's what that's for. I thought it was for hanging off the edge. Look, you just put it on the edge of the bowl. No. All right, so, um, oh, I love this little thing, that's great. Uh, and remember, it shoves back up to the grater. This is nice and washed now, and these are not sharp at all. They look it, but they're not. They're kind of like, you know, that's probably what they did use on the set of Wolverine. Maybe Hugh Jackman just used these. But then I just go like this. Oh, my hands are clean. I've got my thumb holder. <laughs> Everyone needs a thumb holder. It's like the new version of a bum bag. I'm sure you could do this with a potato masher, though. But I'm, I'm, I'm working it together. You work the fat into the flour. So all I need to do is get some water and add a tablespoon or two, and then the water will act as the glue to bring it together and bond it. You can use milk, you could chuck some sugar in here now if you want. I'm just going for a really, really basic dough. And this is sort of kneading for us. And what I like about it is so far, I've not even touched it. Having that th thumb press thing there is really helpful. And the, the, the shape of it, the curve, so I can go around the bowl and bring it together, I really like this. Thank you so much, guys. All as one big lump like that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Brilliant. But rolling the dough out is so hard. If only I had some sort of silicon mat bag thing that kind of helps you roll it out. Oh yes, we can. Uh, this is a silicon dough rolling bag and it's by OXO. In fact, that was who made the grater. I think OXO, Dream Farm and Joseph Joseph are three of the gadget companies that I really will take inspiration from with my own range. Imagine it kind of like, you know how there was that image of like Google and Apple, they all started in a little garage? How it could kind of like, you could be part of that. You never know. It could fail, but hey, let's just do it, right? Oh, look at this. Oh, it's like a face mask. 
Ah, oh, look, it's got the sizes. Like, you can go all the way up to like a 12 inch pizza. Ah. Okay, so I've given it a wash and I'm way more tidier than I was making the uh, jammy dodger. But uh, look, potentially, if this works, what I'm gonna do, I've opened that way too wide. A bit of flour in there. I had to dry this out thoroughly inside out, by the way, because if I put flour in there with the water, it'll just be like glue and stick there and be like, was that a bit close? So that's sort of gonna lubricate it a little bit. Hang on. <laughs> so it's on there. <laughs> Get in there. I feel like I'm packing one of the girls' lunch boxes for school. Right, there it is. There is our ball of dough inside. Zipped up bag. Awesome. Look at you. Look. Now, if only I had a rolling pin that could adjust the thickness so I could roll it out to the thickness that I want, not that I'm really bothered about that. So this by Joseph and Joseph, I've had for in the house for so long, so, so long. I'm like, when can I use it? Now we're on a roll, we can use it. Do you know why I really like this? Is because you know when you're making dough, um, you roll it out and people say roll it out thinly. Now you know that you can roll it out and it's even in size. I really like that. And it is scary by doing that. You can get so much more out of it. Look, I've nearly got a full on 12 inch pizza here, which is amazing. Yeah, it might be a little bit delicate. I can ram it full of flavor, but I have not touched this pastry and it's made. I didn't see many of these before, but this is genius. Uh, oh, 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 yes. It does need a little bit of flour on it. Okay, that's the one thing I would say if you want to do it completely hands-free to get to this stage, flour it really well, but look, it's going to come off of that. It's fine. Right, I'm going to leave this bit for now. Oh yeah, you're a little stuck, that's all right. But I'm going to make a small pie with it and I should have a bit of excess here. That is a really good dough. So I'll push this in, trim off my excess. I'll collect my dough together, give it a bit of flour. This time I'm gonna get my hands in here. Cause I don't feel like I've done it. <laughs> it's really weird. And keeping it on the same setting, I'm gonna roll it out. And of course you can turn it over. I didn't even think of that, wow. Sorry, I just get really excited when things work. Uh, yeah, 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 we'll make it fit. Then a bit of water. Oh, in go our big old stoned teeny bit of sugar. And we're just gonna warm this up. So we'll stir these round gently so the sugar will dissolve into the water and it will soften like a mush these down a little bit. Just as an aside, I found some strawberries in the fridge just then, so I've just quartered them. I'm just mushing this down, not for much longer. It's about five minutes just to soften it up. So I prick the base. And I'm gonna just spoon in the fruit. So our egg wash from earlier, just brush the edges. The egg will act as a glue. Yeah, so I'm just bringing that together like that, quite rough, I, I love that sort of approach. Egg wash on top. And here's some other good measures I've got with a, whoa, they are good normally. They've got a little windscreen wiper on it, so it levels them off, you've seen them before. In you go, my pretty. Goodbye. As I wait for my golden pie to bake, I'm excited about this next gadget. Every now and then I hold one in my hands and I'm like, work. There it is, the Chip and Dice by a company called Lakeland. I think you have them in the States and other countries as well. Uh, basically a big kitchen shop. But the Chip and Dice, uh, nothing to do with the Chippendales. Uh, you put a potato in there, you smack it, it pushes this bit along, the potato comes out as a, as a severed friend. You put him in as one and then he's multipled. You make chips with it, basically. As you know, I've got history with French fry making chip gadget machines. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what I like about this potentially is that you encourage it, you nurture it to go towards a blade. Uh, do you know what I mean? Oh, I like it already. It looks a little bit like a rat master. It feels uh, sturdy. So, ooh, is this a spare blade? Yes, I like this. So that's quite a wide one, hello. All right, so I've got all the bits here, the actual main base bit of it, it's already got the smaller blades in because you can make thick cut or skinny cut chips and it also does work on onions and carrots and stuff like that as well. Cucumber, carrot sticks and cubing potatoes if you just want to cube it. Oh, you'd put it in twice, that's amazing. I've just worked out how you change the blade. Look, imagine that I'm Arnold Schwarzenegger in an action movie. Jenny, get down! See, you reload it. So you just pop down the button then. Jenny, get down. And you put your blade in. 
So this is the knife guide and that is how you cube the potato. So I think it goes under here. Yes. So you can actually fit a knife down this gap. That's how you cube the potatoes. Cause you go in one way and you can do it that way. Ah, okay. So this goes up into here. Oh my, this is really sturdy. I like this a lot. Behold, a washed potato. I'm not even gonna trim the top off. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. Look, and then I, I think I just pop this up like this, I lift like that and back it up. It's a little bit in there, but wow. I've got chips. <laughs> You have to give it a bit of force, but then once it's there like that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We've got cubed potato, that's amazing. That is brilliant. You can make, I think is it called parmentier potatoes? Really cubed, nice, or oh, really good with a Sunday roast. If you do want to see me on the next video do some more vegetables on it, I think you might not need me to because it works, that's awesome. All right, this is some oil in a pan that I'm gonna warm up and fry these chips. I'm doing it, I'm frying the chips. I don't normally fry chips, I don't really enjoy frying, but I'm doing it for one other gadget. Our last major gadget is uh, this hot dog toaster. Now you might think that there's just one hot dog toaster, but no, I have another one that's arrived that I'll save for another video, but this one, I've been trying to get for quite a while. It actually toasts the buns and the dogs and it's quite neat. And also I think it's UK connection. Oh, UK plug. Yes. Oh, no, 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 I do not like that idea. Metal tongs with a toaster, I ain't using that. <laughs> These guys think I'm crazy with toasters or something. So you've got an insert here. I don't know what that flappy thing's for. Very cheap. But you, you put your buns in there. Well, hey. Uh, and that slots in there and that's where the hot dogs go. All right, here's one thing I was worried about. Uh, it says about the size of hot dogs, do not use jumbo ones, use standard hot dog sausages because if you use jumbo ones, they'll actually swell as they cook and potentially jam the toaster. All hot dogs and buns are not the same. That's true, just like people. Therefore, you need to adjust the variable heat controller accordingly. You know, normally it says to do one initial heat to get any smoke off of it, but it's not saying that. I think we should go for it. I've never studied hot dog buns so much in all my life, but they were genuinely pretty much all the same size. So that goes in there. So all I'm doing, I'm not completely ripping it apart, but I'm opening it so it fits in there. I don't like the fact that these bits at the top aren't gonna cook, are they? Mm -hmm. So I did buy two different size packs of these hot dogs. Uh, you know, the really unhealthy ones, like one of the, one is 30%, 32%, yes, of your daily fat intake. But this is the jumbo ones, and this is the normal ones. You see the jumbo, ooh, it just goes in there, but that is gonna, if that's gonna expand and swell, whereas this one, that sits in there pretty daintily, so we'll stick with the smaller ones. So there we go, we are about to make a hot dog. Right, I've just taken out, I don't trust it. I think when I put it on, there'll be some smoke, there always is. Oh, it's on, oh my gosh. Uh, there's a power setting as well of one to five. I'm not gonna go spinal tap and crank it up to 11. There's a stop button if I need to stop it. And yes, there, <coughs> there is actually smoke coming off of it. Wow, that was lethal. <laughs> so I've just turned it off at the wall. I ain't taking any uh, risks with this. There we go, that's in. All right, power three and down. I need to turn the power on. Okay, the hot dogs are in, but the bread the bread didn't go down, but I'm hoping by toasting it, it'll actually uh, give it less friction. It might come up easier. It's definitely cooking in there. It's been two minutes. Um, I can't see any browning on the buns or the sausage yet, but I'll keep you posted. And crikey, I don't know. One of my sausages has dropped right down there. I've turned it off at the wall. Oh, oh my gosh, it's, it's cooked. I was turning it off at the wall because I was really worried that um, the sausage was dropped down there, but they're really browned. See, they're browned. I don't think the buns are though. Ha 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 ha. Oh, oh, look at that. They're, they're lightly charred. They're not completely burnt yet. Um, okay. 
<laughs> kind of trapped in a cage. Look, it did swell out. The buns right here aren't done, so we're gonna crank it up to five. Oh, and they're fitting in. This is good. I mean, it's not good, is it? The other one is, is I think, better, a bit safer as well. We'll keep an eye on that, but I've got my oil. I'm gonna do this very carefully. All right, chips going in. I said carefully, whoops. Ah, uh, uh, uh. Okay, off the heat. Uh, that's why I don't like frying. I forgot about my buns as well. Uh, something's burning. Oh, that's a bit of hot dog residue. Uh, let's just stop it. Oh, they're toasted on the sides. Oh, all that excitement was worth it. They're just on some kitchen towel. <gasps> what about my pie? Oh, my pie. My pie. Yes. Oh, that smells insane. Well, there's my hot dogs. And the good news is, yeah, that's cooled down really quickly. All right, so the buns. Hey. Oh wow, you couldn't see it, but, oh there we go, this is really, really, really hot, ow, 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 oh it's off, it's off, let's do it, <laughs> yes, yes, Cinderella you shall go to the ball, look at that, hot dogs, oh I forgot my last minute bonus gadget, um, <laughs> do you remember the time that I burnt my old worktop, my oat worktop like this one? because I needed one of these. Well, hey, this is a trivet, um, but this one is an expandable one. Look, imagine if you have red hot cups or ramekins, and then you've got slightly bigger like saucers or huge plates or one big pan, maybe like that, for oil, hot oil. I can put my pan down. Oh my gosh, please work. This is from Joseph. Joseph again, stretch expandable silicon pot stand, by the way. So obviously if you don't have uh, oak worktop, you probably don't have to worry about this so much, but look. Now, if I was to put this down on there, that would singe it and make a lovely ring on it. Some might say authentic, rustic, but no, down on there. And I can't tell you how long I've wanted to review this gadget so I can just basically use it uh, in future videos. Yeah, it's a trivet, but it extends. I could probably get two pans on that. Yeah, you could get two pans on it, amazing. You can get trivets of all shapes and sizes. Sometimes you could use a small chuck, no, not gonna say that. But I like that, oh, it's quite hot anyway. But look, I'll just go whoop like that and then uh, shove it in my gadget drawer. But then I need it, I need it, don't I? Oh, you golden beast. Oh, look at that, I need it. I could have really done with this for the roast dinner playlist. I can stick it down on there. Air's getting under it so it'll cool down a little quicker. I don't have to no longer stick it on my hob. Trivets are the future. So all the cool places now call it like a dirty hot dog loaded, all right? So you've come to Barry's, although I am potentially making a pizzeria this year with a friend in my hometown, come visit. Uh, look at that, there's my dirty charred dog. And I'm gonna load it with filthy relish. And also like yellow mustard, because yellow's sometimes a dirty word, isn't it? Yellow, ugh, grungy. Oh, and then I'm gonna drench it in stinking fries. There we go. <laughs> Not like too bad a hot dog does it? You've done well today. Hot dog and chips and a lovely pie. That will be amazing. Oh nice. I kind of didn't grease it did I? <laughs> it's stuck but we've got the top on it. It's, it's not about recipes really in these videos it's more about the theory. The kids are gonna go berserk but I don't care. I pay the mortgage in this house. You listen to me. Sorry. Uh, chocolate custard. Just a little dribble of that. I'll put it in the fridge for them but oh. Ah, oh, we've done well. This is my lunch. Hey, I told you we were gonna get through some gadgets today, didn't I? Wow, don't forget to subscribe for regular videos if you haven't already. Uh, there's at least two a week and some regular live streams coming soon. Uh, don't forget to have a marathon on all the videos over 1500 here on the channel. And if you've seen anything you want, any suggestions, let me know down below or on social media. Boom. Check your level player. No matter what your style, the kitchen's for me. Simon's mustache, goatee, maybe all three. Oh, chips are great. Oh my gosh. Uh, my hot dog. I mean, I've had worse at friends' barbecues. You know who you are, all right? You know when you're at a barbecue and you do that, you're like, thanks. And you're eat, literally eating a block of coal. Yeah, it's good. The device, though, dangerous. Keep an eye out for the other one. Also on the subject of charring, check out this tweet I sent the other day about the graph of toast. Um, this was my amended version. Let me know which battleship place you would take. 
Oh, chocolatey velvet custard with it as well. It's stonking. I'm pretty certain there was something else I meant to show you, but it doesn't matter. I'll save it for another one. Food from me and from Boston. Hello, boy. And from Amy hiding under the chair. Goodbye. <laughs>